Hi, in this video I will address pelvic floor issues in postnatal stage. Talking about a prolapse, high tone and low tone pelvic floor, the importance of correct engagement and relaxation of pelvic floor muscles, as well as when can you start running and exercising again. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe to get notification of more videos coming. Pelvic floor is made of muscles, nerves, tissues and ligaments, creating a hammock supporting pelvic organs. Over the years, I have come across many mums who have underestimated the importance of strengthening pelvic floor muscles during pregnancy and postpartum. For example, a mum who's had a first baby, easy natural birth, no issues with pelvic floor. She did suffer with constipation towards the end of the pregnancy and after she's had her baby. When she got to eight weeks postnatal, she has developed prolapse. Constipation is very common during pregnancy and postnatal stage. It's important you address this issue with a healthy diet and exercise routine. Another mom who has decided to run 5K six months postnatal. Soon after she's had her baby, she started to train on a regular basis. By the time she got to do the 5K run, she also has developed prolapse. With the running, bouncing, any high impact, it is the constant pounding, putting pressure on a pelvic floor, leading to potential organs to descend. When can you start running again? Guidelines are four to six months postnatal. I completely understand you may not want to wait that long. Before you start considering to do any longer runs, you need to restore your core and rebuild the strength in your pelvic floor. Then gradually start to increase your running distance. When you run, you can run uphill but walk downhill. In my outdoor fitness classes, I also send mums for short distance runs just to get a cardio aspect into the session. I check with every mum if she's got any issues with pelvic floor. If she says yes, I ask her to power walk. If mum is literally six to 12 weeks postnatal, I encourage power walk as well. I don't want to scare you here with things like prolapse because actually there are less prolapses happening during postnatal compared to postmenopause stage. I have had this confirmed from a gynecologist who is my fitness client. I asked her, when do you see more prolapses happening? She did say it is during postmenopause. As we get older, pelvic floor muscles will lose their strength and elasticity. When we go through menopause, hormones levels change as well. All this will weaken pelvic floor muscles, causing potential prolapse. I have a Pilates client who has gone through menopause and developed prolapse. My question was, how did it happen? She said, over the Christmas period, I was suffering with constipation for a few days. Suddenly, I feel this heavy feeling down below. So I went to see a doctor and I was diagnosed with prolapse. It's never too late to build the strength in your pelvic floor. If you are pregnant or just had a baby, excellent time for you to begin with pelvic floor exercises. If you are many years postnatal, start as soon as you can. Pregnancy and giving birth will affect your pelvic floor. If you've had natural birth, assisted birth, or you've been pushing and ended up with emergency C-section, all this will stretch your pelvic floor muscles even if you've had planned C-section. Any pregnancy towards the end will put a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor, stretching and lengthening the muscles. It's important after you've had your baby, you restore your core and rebuild the strength in your pelvic floor. As soon as you can, start with your Kegels. There are isolated pelvic floor exercises 
which later you can integrate into your fitness routine. When can you start exercising again? If you've had easy natural birth and you've been checked by your doctor, you could start as soon as six weeks postnatal. If you've had C-section, you need to wait at least eight to 10 weeks, sometimes 12, and also be checked by your doctor to make sure your scar has healed properly. You can have a two different issues with pelvic floor. You could have a low tone or high tone. Most mums will end up with low tone. However, I see high tone pelvic floor as well. It can be sometimes difficult to recognize whether you've got low or high tone, as some of the symptoms are similar. For example, stress incontinence, when you cough and sneeze, when you run. When your bladder is full, you've got to empty it as soon as possible. The only difference is, if you've got a low tone, you struggle to engage your pelvic floor muscles. If you've got a high tone, it's easy for you to engage the muscles and it can be painful. Sometimes you may feel pain during intercourse as well. The only way you could find out for sure if you go see pelvic floor health specialist who will do internal examination and establish if you've got a low or high tone pelvic floor. There can be a many reasons you could develop high tone pelvic floor. If you've had any unpleasant sexual experience in the past, if you've had a surgery in a pelvis area causing you a lot of pain, if you grind your teeth at night, it will tighten up your jaw muscle, which is connected through fascia with pelvic floor. If you are doing too many Kegels, concentrating on tightening pelvic floor muscles only and not relaxing them. In fact, if you've got a high tone pelvic floor, you need to stop doing your Kegels and concentrate on reverse Kegels, lengthening and stretching your pelvic floor muscles. When I was doing my pelvic floor and deep abdominal training, we were giving an example of a Pilates teacher who ended up developing high tone pelvic floor because she was teaching in her classes constant engagement of pelvic floor muscles and no relaxation at all. As soon as I had finished this training, I started to incorporate deep abdominal breathing into my sessions to achieve strong engagement on the exhale and relaxation on the inhale. Pelvic floor muscles, like any other muscles, needs to be trained correctly. Think about bicep curl. When you do your bicep curl, the muscle will shorten and then it will lengthen. If you would be doing too many short bicep curls, the muscles in your bicep would shorten and you would struggle to relax your arm. Same thing happens with your pelvic floor. If you are focusing on engaging and tightening up your pelvic floor muscles all the time and not relaxing them, eventually the muscles will go into a spasm as they shorten and then they cannot function properly. They cannot close or open the exits. Therefore, symptoms like leakage is common with high tone pelvic floor. It's important you exercise your pelvic floor muscles correctly and regularly. Imagine you've been training your pelvic floor muscles on a regular basis and then you go on holidays for one week and decide to relax and do nothing. When you come back, you will lose up to 5 to 10% of the strength you've built up before you've gone away. And this number increases as you get older. So remember, exercise your pelvic floor muscles regularly, correctly and for the rest of your life. Hopefully now you know more on the pelvic floor. If you suspect you have got any issues with pelvic floor, you need to seek more advice from pelvic floor health physical therapist. In the description box below, you will find the links for the four remaining videos 
of Core Restore series and more information about my six weeks Core Restore program. I also have got a video for pelvic floor relaxation, benefiting to anyone who is pregnant, has got a prolapse or high on pelvic floor.